Good afternoon. Welcome to this webinar regarding studies for the identification and control of the presence of cavities in mango pulp. My name is Leonardo Ortega. I'm the director of research of the National Mango Board, and I will be the moderator this afternoon. And now, in order to begin with our session regarding studies for the identification and control of cavities in mango pulp, I would like to introduce our guest today, Dr. Reginaldo Baezanudo. Dr. Baezanudo is an agricultural engineer focusing on horticulture. He received his degree from the University of Sonora, Mexico. He has a master's degree as well from the Fruticulture Postgraduate Institute in Chapingo. And he also has a PhD in agricultural engineering from the University of the Polytechnic University in Valencia, Spain. He is also the Director of Research of the Center of for Technology Development, Validation, and Transfer. He is also the president of the Ibero Americano American Post Harvest Institute and also a consultant for the mango industry. He has published more than 100 articles, research articles in national and international journals, and he has edited and contributed to nine specialized books. Currently, he has, is working on ongoing projects such as the development of edible, edible films and Vanguard technologies for food products post-harvest. He is also on working on food safety and quality systems using standards based on the Global Food Safety Initiative. And with that, I would like to welcome Dr. Reginaldo Baez-Sanudo. I will hand it over to you. Thank you very much, Leo, and good afternoon to everyone. Well, I always say that it's best to start, or rather it, the hardest part is getting started, and then once we get started, we always feel more confident. So the objective today is talk, to talk about the studies carried out in the 2022-2023 season regarding a problem that has been becoming more serious, which is the presence of cavities in mango pulp. This problem really is something that we see much more frequently in Ataulfo mangoes. And it is considered a physiological disorder, not so much physical damage caused by some mechanical issue, but rather a response to certain conditions. We have also seen it less frequent, but less frequently in Tommy Atkins and Kent. I have a photograph here of a shipment from a grower who had called us, uh, who was very unhappy because his shipment had been rejected because of this situation, and he didn't know uh, what was going on with the fruit. And this is the appearance of the fruit. Uh, we'll be talking a lot more about this. So what's going on here? Well, people, those who have published information specifically about this dis disorder, uh, folks from Davis, UC Davis in the United States, basically they attribute it, attribute this disorder to the fact that when the fruit is subjected to hot water treatment at a high temperature, 46.1 degrees, the fruit wants to breathe, needs to breathe, but cannot because it's submerged. And during that time, what happens is that there's a sort of anaerobic respiration and alcohol accumulates in the cells. 
And once this stress period passes that generates bubbles, uh, they those bubbles then generate these cavities. And why does this happen? Well, if we look at the peel of the fruit, there's really a change in the composition of the wax or the cuticle. And so it does not form the proper barrier to allow for that breathing process. If we look at the normal process, so to speak, the physiological process of maturation of the fruit, while it is the case that all the packing houses begin with physiological mature fruit, we need for that process to continue advancing. So what we're seeing is some fermentation involving alcohol and an anaerobic uh, situation. So this is seen in fruit subjected to hot water treatment. Well, we all know that fruit breathes, that it takes in oxygen. And I want to mention here I, I normally use this slide when I talk about fruit and post-harvest elements, uh, specifically mangoes and all fruits breathe. But when I talk about this intake of oxygen, it doesn't have to be external oxygen necessarily. Normally, there are interest, there's intracellular space within the fruit that contains gas and oxygen which is what is normally used for this respiration process. So the process itself is generally to use oxygen and sugar. Uh, it converts it into CO2 and vapor and with ATP and we also see changes in the proteins and enzymes are activated, such as cellulose and others, that will at some point break down the membranes, membranes and the cells. We also see the formation of carotenoids, which is the maturation process. This process can slow down, can be slowed down with temperature management and depending on the level of oxygen. And so all of the technology used to conserve fruit is based on these factors. For example, modified atmosphere, controlled atmosphere, or films that we occasionally use to modify this exchange and that extends shelf life. However, we have to do it in a way that is well-informed so that we can prevent these disorders. So it's very important to be clear about this. I'm talking about the internal oxygen at this time because it is restricted during the 90 minutes that uh, the fruit is subjected to hot water treatment. We'll go into more detail about this. And of course the fruit breathes. And so this is a fruit that begins its respiration process and then the heat accelerates that process. So quickly, if we look at these different elements. We have the cuticle, which is uh, the which can be more or less permeable depending on the conditions. And between the cells, which include the parenchyma, the mesocarp, we there are a lot of intracellular. There's a lot of intracellular space that contains gases and air. And the cells use these for this process. So 
we can talk about the specifics of this process and we can see clearly this wax layer when we subject the fruit to high temperatures the wax becomes amorphous and less permeable so for example all of these crystals begin to shine because it changes the composition. So this is a very general explanation about what is going on during the metabolism of this fruit. So what is going on here? If it is true that the temperatures are changing the composition and forming bubbles inside the fruit, we have clearly seen this because the fruit that is not subjected to hot water temperature does not form these bubbles. And it is when these bubbles burst during the maturation process, that is when those cavities are formed. And we do not see that in fruit subjected to hot water or treatment. So we have to really look at what the conditions are in the packing house and determine if that is the reason and how we can control it. So what we did was to condition the fruit. If it's under osmotic pressure, how is it that we uh, apply osmotic pressure and depends on the turgency of the fruit coming from the field. And if we apply a high temperature to it, what will happen is uh, given that turgency because uh, turgidity, given that uh, it's able to respirate uh, faster, the, it will form bubbles much faster. So the condition is how much do I need to stress the fruit coming from the field to do the hot water treatment. So what we do is we keep the fruit for 24 and up to 48 hours on, or zero hours. Uh, it depends on the conditions. And then we give it the hot water treatment, 115 degrees for about 85 minutes. Why 75 to 85? Because it's written in the protocol. For these types of long uh, fruits like ataulfos, uh, the protocol calls for 75 plus 10, and then to go through the cooling with uh, cold water to reduce uh, seven or 10 rather degrees uh, Fahrenheit or do 75 minutes and rest for 30 minutes and then the cooling process to determine whether it's some sort of development or to see whether fruits were more or less susceptible to developing these cavities or cellular collapse within the pulp of uh, the mango fruit. Obviously, this is the effect of a thermal uh, shock to the fruit. Why is that? Because we have observed in the results and the uh, beginning document was that when we had an 85-minute treatment and then we place it in water and cold water immediately the thermal shock was too much and uh, if we do 75 and cool for 30 minutes the thermal shock would be less or to provide the 75 minute treatment and not do anything at all afterwards however we wanted to see what were our consideration for each case to see what would happen so what we saw is that we needed to assess the conditioning of the fruit pre or post uh, hot water treatment. And of course, what uh, we were ending up with, uh, we did it with Ataulfo mango. Why? Because of the severity of uh, this uh, disease in, the man in this type of mango. So in July in Nayarit, Mexico, in the ma ma Northern Pacific of Mexico, with different conditions, the process is similar in most of the plants. The fruit comes from the fields during the harvest. Then it is placed on the selection band to uh, weed out the process that the one that will not be processed. And um, so it's washed, and then it is uh, selected by size to give uh, the hot water treatment according to size. So the size selection is done. The boxes are piled up for uh, 
uh, presenting them to the hot water treatment. And there, these are the palettes that were used for our sampling subjects. And then, uh, then the high, hot water treatment and then water, cool water uh, cooling, depending on the conditions that were applied. These are the treatments that were done in 2022. What were they all ab about? Taking the fruit. That was uh, the control on the A0. The sample was taken and nothing was done to it. It wasn't uh, washed, selected, or uh, given the hot water treatment or anything treatment to, we allowed us to wait for one day, it's waiting for 24 days, uh, uh, 24 hours of uh, rest. And then we did the selection uh, and then we had three consideration. First, the 75 plus 10 minute treatment, no rest period, and then a 30 minute uh, cool water cooling at 75 degrees for 30 minutes. And after that, it would be packed. The other consideration would be to process only, to apply only 75 minute treatment. And right after that, not to do anything, package or present it to the market. And uh, the other treatment was tr 75 minute treatment without the 10 minutes to allow it to rest for 30 minutes after the hot water treatment. And after that, to do the cooling with water. These are the conditions that the fruit could go through or the hot water treatment uh, conditions that are established in the uh, working plan to control for the fruit fly the, established by the FDA and uh, the Department of Agriculture of Mexico and exporters themselves. The other treatments were to allow for a two-day rest period uh, for fruit in, in the conditions for the packer, established by the capper, pa packer, 30 degrees, relative humidity of about 40%. And after that, the washing and the selection happened. And then the treatments were the same, 75 plus 10, and then cooling, 75 without anything else, and then 75 minutes, a 30 minute uh, rest time, and then after that, a water cooling. This was done in 2022, and let's see the results we had for each of these treatment groups. In 2023, uh, it wasn't done. It was done for February in Chiapas, in the South Pacific in Mexico with different uh, climate conditions. Let's see why we were having the same type of results or effects uh, by the treatment. The fruit came from the, the harvest that was selected uh, to weed out that was not uh, included in the process, wash, classify, select, classify, and uh, fill up the crates for treatment. These are the treatment crates and whether for a hot water treatment or a water cooling process. These are the different types of uh, treatments we saw. Uh, so no condition was uh, the control group. And we also had uh, control treatments that uh, started on day zero, but did receive the hot water treatment uh, for 75 minutes, one with a, a rest period and the cooling, and the other one without the rest period uh, or the uh, water cooling, the same day that they were harvested, actually. What we did in this study was to establish conditions, which I'm calling a slight stress to the fruit or a slight dehydration, and that would remove some of that uh, osmotic uh, pressure or air in the fruit and then submit it to uh, uh, treatment three, four, five, uh, one day rest. Uh, so 75 plus 10 and uh, um, 75 only, 75 only with uh, the rest period and cooling. 
So what were we finding? Something important we were trying to find is if we were establishing these uh, conditions, we needed to determine how dense the fruit was. Assuming that the more dense, in theory, they would have a smaller intracellular space. They were more compact, which would lead to less uh, disorder inside of the cell, which is what we were observing. Regarding the loss of weight, the uh, accumulated the cumulative uh, weight loss, uh, we were seeing that uh, measuring the relative temperature, the inside temperature of the fur of the fruit, we were measuring firmness, uh, the uh, presence of damage within the fruit uh, uh, from a very incipient uh, damage to damages that were uh, occurring further on. We were uh, considering that perhaps these white uh, stains that uh, was where the collapsed uh, uh, cells were, where the bubbles uh, burst uh, might have a higher concentration of starch, uh, but uh, uh, our tests didn't really prove that they weren't really useful in that regard. So we measured uh, total soluble solids to see if uh, the fruit was uh, uh, ripening in the normal way and normal conditions because we were assuming that producers think that they can't leave it outside for a long time because they're going to uh, ripen all of a sudden instead of considering the ripening process for all of them. Um, and if we see the temperature, the fruit, and uh, we'll see this later on. Once the treatment uh, was applied after 12 and 24 hours, the temperature was lowered from 46 degrees to a normal fruit temperature, which matches the room temperature between 20 and 25 degrees centigrade. This is something, a temperature that's reached in general terms quite quickly with the environmental conditions. When the fruit is... Uh, a place in the marketing condition between 20 and 25 degrees, 23 plus minus two um, degrees. If you look at the uh, study in 2023, the conditions were the same from day zero, the temperature dropped to 20 to 25 degrees centigrade. And with uh, the treatment and the steam applied to fruit, then, then uh, throughout the next couple of days, the temperature evens out to 20, 30, 50 uh, percent relative humidity. Something interesting we found when we were finding these drops, we were considering what was happening that was happening every couple of days, two or three days. We saw that uh, in, in the first five hours, we were observing that the fruit was becoming stable. If we take a look at the environmental temperature, the external temperature, the temperature is 30, 33, 34 degrees centigrade. And the fr fruit that comes in at 46 degrees after the hot water treatment, it reaches that balance uh, point in about four hours, uh, uh, given uh, the environmental conditions with out going through any kind of external cooling. If you see it during the first minutes, 120 minutes, that is two hours, we are not getting to the external temperature. And why is this significant? Because we wanted to see that in several packing plants and several uh, producers do it uh, after the hot water treatment. They do nothing to the fruit. That is to say that the, some of them pa let some time go by, some of them package right away. But what we need to determine how long do we need to wait until that fruit gets to the environmental conditions without thermal shock. And it takes about four to five hours, five hours for our fruit to be uh, acclimated, so to speak, to the conditions in the packing plant. So what was the damage we that we saw in the fruit? 
T2, T3, zero days. During the same day, they were exposed to the hot water treatment. And when we analyzed after the hot water treatment, we started to see some damage. Uh, there was a certain percentage of damaged fruit starting on day one. Fruit that was actually never under any type of stress conditions. This is one day. Actually, this was uh, T1 for zero days. Con the conditions in uh, one day and uh, the two days. In 2022, you saw that there were no treatments during day zero. Only we we only had a control, and then on the first day after they came, 24 hours of uh, acclimating to the conditions, you saw that when they sat for a whole day, they all had damage. Which one had more or less from the beginning, regardless of whether they were allowed to rest or not, and whether it was cooled or not, they all showed some sort of damage. T5, T6, and T7 were fruits that had been resting for two day, two days, two days rest. These were fruits that uh, T5 was 75 plus 10, so 85 minutes, and then a uh, cooling, uh, a water cooling process. T6, we were uh, able to see damage on day six, T7, we were able to see damage on day three. So in two days, apparently, allowed the fruit to breathe or to use its own oxygen and exuding enough CO2 to lose the osmotic pressure it uh, has coming from the field. In 2023, was, this was even clearer to us. If you look at the fruit on day one, T1, T2, this is fruit that uh, when it came from the field, it was treated uh, with hot water treatment the same day. All of them, all of them started to have fruit damage, symptoms rather, from the first day. With one day of rest or one day of conditioning, we started to say, see fruit subjected to different treatments, but up to the sixth day, and fruit that was allowed to rest for two days or had two days of conditioning, T8, which is treatment with two days, 75 degrees with no 30-minute rest, no hydrocooling, never showed any symptoms of cavities in the pulp. With two days, 75 degrees Fahrenheit, or rather centigrade, 75 degrees Fahrenheit, 115, 75 minutes plus 10 minutes of hydrocooling. They had symptoms at 9 to 12 days. The other treatment was 115 degrees Fahrenheit, 75 minutes, 30 minutes of rest, and then hydrocooling the same conditions with low percentages of damages and uh, starting on the 9th, 10th, 15th, up to 15th day at market conditions. What did we see? Well, if we look at it this way, we started to see damage starting with small bubbles you can see here, but we wanted to differentiate because we saw different damage in different fruits, such as uh, these areas, that turn into white areas and they do become filled with starch rather than cavities. These are starchy areas rather than cavities. The cavities do not acquire starch or lugol. And we can also see how the cavities grow in the fruit. 2022, if we look at the days, I think we saw that already. T2036, six moderate, and then T5, where we never saw the problem. T6 and T7, where we saw damage at six or three days. 223 or 2023 was 
quite different. We have T2, same day, treatment at 75 degrees, 75 minutes, plus 10 minutes, hydrocooling, 75 minutes, rest, hydrocooling, we see symptoms. At six days, the symptoms get worse. You can see here treatment one, and then at three days, six days, nine days, 12 days, 15 days, treatment one at 15 days, we can see quite a bit of damage here. You can see it very clearly. Treatment two, here we have also the progress, and then treatment three, which is one day of rest, and then with treatment four, treatment five, which includes one day of rest, treatment six, seven, and eight. Eight is not included here because we saw no symptoms, but we can see that only up to day nine in treatment seven, we saw very mild symptoms. At 12 days, you can see here treatment six and seven, also mild damage compared to all the rest. So those are the symptoms that we saw. Now, something that you might notice here is that the colors, we could say that seven, six and seven look more mature, but we can see based on the information that that was not the case. What was the density, the effect on the density of the fruit? Well, it's a logical impact. The density, as the respiration process advances, structure is lost and density goes down. For example, membranes, cellular walls, and starch. And so at some point, we see that the density goes down. So what did we see? Well, we had the control fruit. Here we have Nayarit, 2022. Above one, what does that mean? Well, that's fruit that were submerged. They don't necessarily float. 2023, we see the same thing by day one on day one. We see many, much fruit with high levels of density, but we see a very rapid decline compared to these uh, examples, which more or less were maintained. So we can see this uh, impact on the density. So what's the indicator to determine whether or not we will see the disorder? Well, we couldn't really see a relationship. Um, we did see with the more dense fruit in night that the fruit was more dense in Nayarit. But well, weight loss is something that we see in general, we see maybe a 15% loss in over 17 days at, in market conditions. So we see wrinkled fruit after 17 days under market conditions. And also if we accelerate, or if we are accelerating the maturation process, we would, would we see greater weight loss? Well, in the, in the fruit that we're allowed to rest compared to those that we're not, what am I talking about? If I allow the fruit to rest, I would think I would see it sooner, but that's that's not the case. We see very similar rates of weight loss at 15 days, whether the fruit has been allowed to rest for one day or two. If we look at it from another point of view, if we look at market conditions, under market conditions, what do the mangoes look like that were subjected to different treatments? So, also, and also the control mangoes. Well, at 15 days, we can see that the it is not quite as yellow, but T2, that was one day, T3, one day, another day, or two days of rest. 
So the fruit at 12 days are very similar. And of course there are variations just because of the sample itself, but talking about weight loss, it was very similar. So the recommendation then would be to allow the fruit to rest for one day or two days. And this does not have a huge impact, much impact on the ripening process. In 2023, here we have no rest. And you can see the difference between the control and these two groups that were subjected to hot water treatment and the mangoes are very similar after 15 days. There are some fruit with damage. And if we look at the fruit allowed to rest for one day, the fruit is very similar. If we compare the fruit with the control group and then at two days, we're wouldn't say that the condition is very critical. We would have to compare this based on the damage to the pulp. So here we have the control, the loss of firmness, which is similar. And here we're talking again about the fruit that the fruit that we're not allowed to rest. We're, and we see the firmness goes down as well, the same as with one day of rest and the same as with two days of rest. So what does this mean? That the ripening process is normal, whether subjected to hot water treatment or not, when we compare it with the control fruit in this case. So total soluble solids or bricks, well, here we see an increase of total soluble solids. Uh, Altalfo, we know, can get to over 20 degrees bricks. And we see this at 13 or 14 days. And remember that when we're talking about 13, 14 days, we'd have to add one or two days compared to the rest of the fruits. So we're talking, here we have the control, six days, nine days, 12 days, 15 days. But some have been allowed to rest for one day and some for two. After three days, there we have five and six and then 17 days in comparison to the control group. So we can also see here, and this is curious, we have fruit from Chiapas with the bricks. They went up above 17, 16, 17 degrees bricks. What does that mean? Well, it means that we could say that the fruit from Nayarit is sweeter, but we're also saying that at some point they have more starch and we believe they are more dense because they're heavier in terms of specific weight. And that means that when we talk about the damage and the percentages that you see, that you saw, they have fewer cavities. So that was what we observed. And well, so what are our conclusions on the basis of all of this information and our recommendations, well, it would be ideal to allow Atolfo mangoes to rest for one or two days. We saw a reduction in the incidence and the severity of cavities. And there was no effect really on the natural maturation or ripening process as a result of this conditioning process, allowing the fruit to rest for one or two days delayed the presence of damage six days, whether fruit from Nayarit or Chepas, two completely different regions. And let's recall the flowering time 
and the harvest time of an atal flamenco and chapas is shorter, the time between flowering and harvest, compared to atal mangoes in Nayarit. The, this damage does not affect the normal metabolism of the fruit. If we have a mango with cavities that has the same flavor, it really just affects the appearance compared to a mango without cavities. At nine days, the fruit have the same characteristics, uh, whether they were allowed to rest one or two days or the control mangoes. So some believe that allowing the fruit to rest for two days would accelerate the ripening process, but we would have to evaluate that and it it certainly does prevent or slow the formation of these cavities. So it seems to me that it is very much worthwhile. And in fact, this is interesting. We've mentioned this here. Many packing houses receive mangoes on Saturday and they do not work on Sunday. So that fruit, it does not receive treatment until Monday. So that means it is resting for 24 hours or close to 24 hours. And in that fruit, the symptoms of cavities are much less or we don't see any cavities. So this has to do really with, with scheduling and timing and when the hot water treatment is applied. Fruit from Nayarit is more dense, we believe. So that results in le fewer cavities they have higher total soluble solids, as, as I mentioned. So we do believe, as a recommendation, that Atalulfo mangoes should be allowed to rest for one day and preferably two days. The fruit needs, apparently, to reduce that osmotic pressure because, really, this process, this respiration process is very important. If the fruit has a lot of oxygen in the intercellular space and it is breathing and generating CO2 and water vapor, that allows the fruit to reduce the osmotic pressure. And then when it is subjected to hot water treatment, which creates a lot of pressure and some water infiltration that allows it to bear the treatment better we would never say that fruit should be packaged less than five hours after the hot water treatment. It should be allowed to sit for at least five hours. If the treatment is prolonged for 10 minutes or if the fruit is allowed to rest for 30 minutes, it should be allowed to sit at room temperature to return to room temperature. So what do we mean by this? We think that packing the fruit before five hours, packing hot fruit can be as damaging as subjecting the fruit to damaging temperatures. So it is important to allow the fruit to come to ambient temperature before it is pack packaged. So we also say, we're also saying that fruit from Nayarit and Chiapas should not be handled in the same way because this thermal shock has a different impact. But in both cases, they should be managed properly. So that was what we saw. And we would be happy, I'd be happy to answer your questions. And I would also like to thank the National Mango Board that financed this research study. And I would also like to thank the packing houses in Nayarit and Chiapas, Guillermo Lozano, and their, his team, 
that really provided all the support necessary for this study. So that was my presentation and uh, that I had prepared for you today regarding the results of this research study uh, these over these two years. So this is all for me. And if you have any questions or comments, I'm ready. Leonardo uh, has I can send them to me. Thank you so much for your excellent presentation and wonderful information. It could be information that's useful to packers to minimize damages. We do have time for a couple questions or comments. We have a comment from Luis Utrera. He has uh, observed in the fruit that comes from the field where uh, irrigation hasn't been suspended before harvest and they are very um, uh, under very much pressure uh, to the hot water treatment. What can you say about that? Yes. What we saw is that regardless of, well, as with anything, if they, it comes from a uh, orchard that is uh, recently rained on, it will have more pressure. And this would mean that it would be even more mandatory to allow the fruit to rest for at least two days or even longer. However, if it comes, even if it comes from an orchard and uh, perhaps it's not rained on or irrigated, maybe the fruit is has less turgency, but uh, it will have osmotic pressure from the tree itself and it's high osmotic pressure which is too high to be able to subject be subjected to hot water treatment so we don't see an adverse uh, re effect on the quality of the fruit regardless of the conditions in uh, stressing the fruit a bit more we also have a question from marlene espinosa from nicaragua stating this problem of uh, cavities in the mango pulp has been seen in Ataulfo in the fields even before uh, submitting it to hot water treatment. What do you think this is due to? Well, I think this is something that needs to be analyzed and uh, distinguished from this other case. Before assessments and in the end we did uh, determine that hot water treatment does cause this problem. So when we started thinking of addressing the issue we wanted to make sure that it was a post-harvest issue. So what we did was uh, that in the prior season in the beginning of 2022 from Chiapas, Oaxaca and so on we started reviewing the mangoes that came to the packing plants when they're cut to make sure there are no fruit flies in them. Testing for fly. Uh, so the food security uh, testing to ensure there were no fruit flies. In none of the cases, in none of the cases were we able to see and we obviously cut thousands of mangoes. We never saw this happening. So that is why we concluded that this was a post-harvest issue. Perhaps there's another condition. We have seen that if we stress it, it doesn't happen. So perhaps what is it that we are doing? So maybe what's happening is a reorganization of membranes and... If it comes from the field and it has some calcifications that are related uh, to potassium disorders in the cuticle or some other issue, I think that's a different type of damage that we are actually addressing at this time. And this happens during the ripening process as well. Or if these uh, mangoes are not ripened and they were not uh, subjected to hot water treatment or subjected to temperature shock, sometimes we see white mangoes, but there is no cavity damages in them.
I think uh, we have time for one more question from Luis Utrera, our dear friend from Guatemala, saying, what is your opinion regarding Ataulfo Mango that uh, when they are cut, you can find that the pulp is black? I think that's a strong physiological disorder. There, which shows some sort of deficiency. We need to do some sort of phytopathological analysis uh, where we can find some sort of pathogen inside the fruit or some sort of uh, condition inside the fruit. If it's a pathogen, that would be something generalized, obviously. We say that if it happens to a specific sector, when it when this type of thing, if it's a pathogen, it would be generalized. If it's only one or two fruits, it could be caused by some sort of pest. But I would think that uh, that black pulp that can be seen out in the fields, it could be some sort of other physiological order or some nutritional uh, deficiency. And regarding the question that was made by Luis Utrera, I can say the following. Uh, years ago, we had a research study regarding black pulp. And as Dr. Baez said, it is uh, related to nutritional deficiencies and also also, uh, the way temperature is controlled. So there is a, a, a combination between very low storage temperatures and nutritional imbalances in the, or nutritional deficiencies in the mango, which would lead to the conditions that would lead to the production of this black pulp. If you are interested, you can find information in our webpage on the results that we got during that uh, research on black pulp, but it's usually uh, related to temperatures. In Ataulfo, we recommend not going below 54 degrees Fahrenheit or 12 degrees uh, centigrade, but it's also a combination of management of the fruit and temperature and nutritional deficiencies. Yes, we have documented this uh, when there is a uh, blackening of the pulp due to temperatures, specifically. So we'd like to thank Dr. Baez and we uh, congratulate him for this wonderful presentation. And we'd like to end our seminar and tell you that we have uh, scheduled another seminar with Dr. Adolfo Leguin uh, where we will talk about uh, the response of mango uh, given different types of irrigation processes. We'd like to thank uh, Dr. Baezañudo once again. So again, thank you everyone and we hope to see you in the next edition of our uh, webinars. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, and good afternoon.